It has now been a year since Russia embarked on a special military operation in Ukraine, invading the former republics of the Soviet Union with its 200,000 soldiers, believing it could demilitarize and denazify the country, deposed the government in a matter of days. It didn't happen, as the invasion is still going on. Yes guys, on February 24, this month, the Ukraine-Russia war hits its one-year mark. What you're about to see this time is an editorial I created about it. Seriously, as I was going through in my head the year-long invasion of Ukraine, words began developing in my mind that I immediately transferred them to the computer. It goes this way. All the Ukrainians see, hear, and go through every freaking day at the sounds of sporadic or continuous gunfire. The explosion of bombs or the thunderclaps created by the barrage of missiles, the crumblings of buildings, and the destruction of houses, the outbursts of moans and screams, the muffled sounds of cries and voices, the atmosphere of fear, despair, and agonies, the silence of the nights, the smell of the disease, piercing through the subconscious mind of the living, well, maybe even the dead. From this, I started creating my blood. And so, War Dies is back. Word Eyes brings you any educational knowledge or information around the globe, current or many years ago, that has historical or significant value. It is your eyes to the world. Since the start of the invasion on February 24, 2022, in what the Russians were made to believe was a special military operation, but which the Ukrainians and the world have viewed as a full-scale war, the casualties on both sides continue to mount. Of the estimated 200,000 Russian soldiers who went inside Ukraine, roughly about 100,000 could have been lost with a similar number of soldiers on the Ukrainian side. About 5,937 Russians have reportedly been killed, while 9,000 Ukrainian soldiers could have also perished. Again, such figures could not be independently verified, and further estimates could yield a higher or lower casualty rate. The Russian military has lost significant amounts of equipment, about 8,044 units with about 4,927 destroyed and about 300 abandoned or captured including 1,500 tanks and 2,400 armored and infantry fighting vehicles with about 10 Russian generals believed to have been killed due to alleged tactical errors and a number of them sacked by President Vladimir Putin himself. Since the invasion began, nearly 8 million people have fled Ukraine for other countries with almost a similar number of 8 million Ukrainians displaced within the country. At this point, let me thank you for your time as you view this video. Should you have any comments, 
I would appreciate it if you registered them down below. And if you haven't subscribed until now, please do so by all means. Thanks. Trains have become the most common means of transportation to flee from Ukraine. Although there were also those who fled by buses and cars, and worse of all, by foot. The countries where fleeing Ukrainians sought refuge most were in Poland, Germany, and Czechia. Some two million refugees have also fled to Russia. The worst that could happen during an invasion is death. As of January this year, civilian deaths in Ukraine could have exceeded 7,000, or 133 of them children, and about 11,327 people were reportedly injured. These do not include those found in mass graves in about 22 locations, or roughly 500 bodies believed to have been slaughtered. The number is expected to rise as more sites are located. Also unfortunately, journalists covering the ongoing invasion became part of the collateral damage, with 15 of them killed as of this time. U.S. journalist Brent Renaud, French reporter Frederick Leclerc Imho, and Irish cameraman Pierre Sakreski, to name a few. Pierre Zek Zuzki, described as a veteran Fox News cameraman, passed away after being injured. With regards to property and infrastructure damages, at least 140,000 residential buildings, 114,700 private homes, 235 cultural sites, and 2,800 educational institutions have been damaged impacting 5.7 million school-aged children. It has also destroyed 320 bridges which have been partially damaged or completely destroyed. It is estimated that the destruction brought about by the invasion has amounted to $97 billion, and it would cost about $350 billion to rebuild Ukraine or bring the country back to its feet. The impact of the invasion will be felt for generations, with families displaced and separated, disruption to human development, destruction of intrinsic cultural heritage, and a reversal of a positive economic and poverty trajectory. Only Putin could provide the real answer to why Russia invaded Ukraine. However, based on his speeches and pronouncements, he believes Russia is not receiving the respect it deserves on the international stage, which, combined with resentment of NATO's alleged aggression and fear of getting a foothold of Ukraine, clouded his decision. Thus, he orders his soldiers to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine. His claim of a genocide being committed against the Ukrainian people for having been bullied for so long by their government appears to contradict his assertion given what is now happening in Ukraine with the rising civilian death toll and widespread destruction of property resulting from his invasion of that country. I believe it's genocide in its purest sense, because children have been killed. Women. The International Criminal Court in The Hague is now looking into a possible commission of crimes against humanity or genocide against him. The attempt to demilitarize and denazify the former Russian satellite by purposely bombing civilian areas and critical energy infrastructure as being carried out by their special military operation could actually be an attempt to erase the modern state of Ukraine which is now being looked at as a possible genocidal intent of the Russian government.
According to retired Colonel Victor Litvinenko, a well-respected member of the Russian professional military scientific community, the special military operation is to defeat the enemy's military, clarifying that the purpose of the operation is very different from the concept of war. Where initially the parties involved were Russia and Ukraine, now it appears Russia is not only fighting with Ukraine but with the collective West, which is providing the combat equipment and weapons to the Ukrainians. Similarly, Ukraine appears to be fighting not only with Russia but also with Belarus and Iran, who both have provided support. Belarus allowed her country to serve as a staging point for the invasion, while Iran has been providing military drones to Russia, respectively, which now makes the conflict a war by proxy. As of today, the invasion is now in its first year, and from the looks of it, Russia has failed to achieve its goal of demilitarizing and denazifying Ukraine as the special military operation can now be interpreted as having escalated into a full-scale war. However, the way Russia has carried out its invasion of Ukraine has only exposed its weaknesses. It badly damaged its military image, tarnished its reputation, disrupted its economy, and altered the geopolitical picture of Moscow in Europe further isolating Russia and making it difficult to bring it back to normalcy again. If Putin resorts to the use of nuclear weapons as he conveniently threatens, it would be at the peril of his own country, a suicidal and desperate move. Of course, the consequence would now be the survival of the world. It does bring us to the two protagonists in this world drama, Russia's President Putin and Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky. Since there are always two sides to a coin, there will be those who may or may not agree with either Putin or Zelensky. In general, putting our biases aside, some may see Putin as a strong leader who is not afraid to use violence when needed. His thuggish approach to leadership has earned him admiration among autocratic and populist leaders. Similarly, there will be those who may see Zelensky in different light, but for the most part, he will be regarded as the undisputed force for the Ukrainian resistance who has remained visible throughout the crucial period in which his country has been subjected to an invasion several times larger than its own. As of now, it is difficult to predict when and how the invasion of Ukraine will end. It could be this year, next year, or it might even explode into a third world war. Barring a change in leadership in Moscow and probably a policy change in the Kremlin, could be the saving grace that the world badly needs. Meanwhile, all the Ukrainians see, hear, and go through every freaking day are the sounds of sporadic or continuous gunfire, the explosion of bombs, or the thunderclaps created by the barrage of missiles, the crumbling of buildings, and the destruction of houses, the outbursts of moans and screams, the muffled sounds of cries and voices, the atmosphere of fear, despair, and agonies, and the silence of the nights, the smell of the disease piercing through the subconscious minds of the living, well, maybe even the dead, as the invasion continues to develop with no end in sight, while the world watches with bated breath. And this once vibrant, flourishing, and beautiful Ukraine 
has now turned into a ghost town and is almost gone. The only thing left is hope, big hope, that this carnage stops once and for all. And that's for now for World Eyes. Stay tuned on my next vlog. And don't forget to subscribe, please. Thank you.